Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be upgrading the cheap $10 lights I've been using on my two shallow aquascapes to two brand new Skylight Entrick FL60s. Skylight was kind enough to send me a couple of their 60cm versions, so we'll be doing a quick unboxing, setup guide, walkthrough of the mounting options, then taking a look at the app. I've had these lights for a couple of weeks now, so we've got quite a bit to look at. Starting off with the unboxing, taking a quick look at the box you'll see a massive chart of data regarding the sizing options, power ratings and light output. I won't go over every single bit of info on this chart because it's quite comprehensive, but if you are interested just pause the video here and have a quick look through it. You'll probably find it pretty interesting. The light is made entirely out of metal and is completely waterproof, which is pretty handy if you need to mount your light on the inside of a lid. As you'll see in a second, there are three different mounting options included in the box and one, a fourth, which I figured out myself. It's a little bit experimental and not an official option, but it works really well for my current setup. You'll see what I mean shortly. So here's everything that comes in the box, all of which is numbered to make life super easy. Just pick the mounting option you want to use and follow the steps on the manual. Pretty hard to make mistakes. This here is the lid mounting manual. And this one here is a standard mount option. I'd say most people are going to be using the standard mount option, so we'll start with the setup process for that first. So the most important thing here when you're setting up these lights is to pay attention to the legs and which side of the acrylic is countersunk. As you'll see here, this allows the screws to sit nice and flush, and if you set them up backwards where they don't sit flush and you have the recess on the inside, you'll have some problems with the screws being a little bit too short. So just pay attention to this when you're setting it up. The first time I set them up, I wasn't paying attention and I obviously made this mistake. So just remember that when you're doing it. Once you've peeled all the plastic off, the rest of the process is pretty easy. You just whack the little screws in, then screw on the two arms on each side for each bracket. As you'll see here, this was the first time that I actually set it up. So you'll see that I had the recessing option backwards on the bottom screw. And there's only a tiny amount of grip that allows it to grab, which isn't ideal. So make sure you do use the right screws and the right recess configuration. It's not as complicated as it sounds. It's just I didn't pay close enough attention to the manual the first time around. Finally, the four clear screws go on the very bottom and they're what's going to be holding the light to the tank so it can't slide around. So the one on the left is the incorrect configuration and the one on the right is the correct configuration. As you'll see, the foot is on the inside and the recess is on the outside so that the screws have the perfect amount of purchase. So for this setup, I'm using the three to five millimeter kit, but if you have thicker glass, there's also a five to 10 millimeter kit option, which is essentially the same. It just has some extra spaces and some longer screws that you can slide between the connections at the very bottom. You'll figure it out easily enough. Once you have the legs set up, you can just slide them onto the light and lock them into the place with the little lug screws. Just screw them in loosely to start and tighten them once you have the light on the tank. It ends up being a lot easier to do. Just make sure you don't screw them in too tight then try to adjust the slider because you will probably scratch the arms. So the lid mount is even easier to set up. Just check which type of lid you have then follow the steps on the instruction manual. Unfortunately, I don't have a lid to fit this to, so I can't show you how it works, but I'll leave a link in the description for a video that shows you the entire process. But here is an example of the light fittings designed for the most common type of lid. You'll see how straightforward it is. As with the previous setup, once you've got the main bracket done, just slide them in, flip it over, and then insert the lugs so that you can adjust the sizing. So here's a quick look at both of the two different mounts. So the one at the front is for the lid mount, and the one at the back is the standard tank mount. For the standard mounting option, just place the light over the tank and adjust the sliding arms to the width that you require, then tighten with the clear screws at the bottom. When you're tightening the clear screws at the bottom, just make sure you don't overdo it. There's no need to go really tight, it's just basically to hold a little bit of firmness on the light and everything locks in nicely. So for my custom mounting option, I basically just flip the stand over and then used a couple of small wood screws that fit through the holes to mount it to the top of my cabinet. The main reason I've done this is because I currently have a ficus growing in my tank and I needed the light to sit a little bit higher so that it would also get some lighting. To connect the light and control it via the app, first download the Skylight app from the Google Play Store or the App Store, then make sure your light is connected to the power and that you have the little QR code slip that came in the box ready to scan. Next, open the app and wait for it to search for devices. Once the search process is finished, tap the plus icon above the register device text and read the instructions that pop up on the screen and then tap OK. Most phones should open the Wi-Fi network menu where you can tap the tiny QR code 
icon to open your phone's camera. When the camera opens, you can just scan the QR code and wait for the process to complete. But if you don't have a QR capable phone, you can also manually connect it. Just tap the light when it appears in the Wi-Fi connection list then enter the password that's on the slip. Once your phone is connected to the light, tab back over to the Skylight app and here you'll see a new menu with a list of Wi-Fi networks. Here just tap the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to. So this is probably going to be your home network and this will move the light across onto your network so it will appear in the app. If you have more than one light like I do here, you can connect as many lights as you want following the exact same process and they will appear in the app. Now, once you do have quite a few lights connected, I highly suggest changing the name of the lights. So if you have more than one, you're going to want to change it. So to do this, tap the light, enter its settings. Once you're inside here, tap and hold the light name near the top, then enter a name. Keep it short. I think it's only under about 10 characters. So for me, I've just named it the position of the tanks on the shelf, then tap OK to save it. So that's the core of the app done. And now we can look at the color options, intensity settings, and some of the schedule options. Now that everything is connected, we can move on to the most important part and the most interesting part. So to adjust your settings, just tap on the light that you want to use, and this will take you into the main core page where you can do adjustments. So here there are four main options, auto, manual, demo, and off. So first we're gonna go over to the manual tab, and here you have some basic options. So you can adjust your intensity, so from 0% to 100, and then above that you have all your different color options. So each one of the options on the grid will give you a different color profile and within the manual settings, whatever you tap here and set will only be for this session. So if you choose to turn your light on and off and have it set to manual, you're going to get these settings. It's handy while you're doing maintenance and stuff on the tank or if you just want to experiment with colors, but the core one we're going to be using for everything is the auto option. So inside the auto option, this is where you can configure your lights entirely to do ramp up, ramp down, different color options, etc. So there are two ways to configure your setup here. So the first one is to tap one of the dots then go down and tap the time. This will bring up a little clock window and allow you to adjust the exact time for that specific dot. Once you've set the time, you can also adjust the color options and the lighting intensity for that particular time. Then you just have to move from dot to dot, adjusting the light intensity and the color option you want, and then finalize with the tick at the bottom of the screen. How you configure this is entirely up to you because each tank is different and you'll have a different color preference. There's some of the default icons there, so the moon, the sun, the mountain, the trophy are all pretty good options to start with. But there's plenty of other ones in between that you might find better for your current tank setup. The other important thing here as well is that you can also tap and drag. So if you want to tap and drag to move dots to different positions to adjust the settings, you can also do that. And that's my preferred method to use. It's a lot easier than adjusting the time and doing the options that way. And if you really want to, and you probably will, you can use the plus icon to add an extra dot so you can have as many different dots throughout the day as you want. I think there is a cap, but it's quite generous. The final of the four options, which I'm not going to actually go over, but I'll just talk about is the demo options. So once you tap this, it will just play through a quick fast forward of your auto time settings. So it will just run through the entire motion of the day in about a thousand times the speed or something. So you can see what your light pattern is going to look like. Anyway, that pretty much covers everything about these lights. Although I'm using them exclusively for aquascapes at the moment, they would also work exceptionally well on vivariums, halidariums, and terrariums. And I also have a couple of build videos coming for both of these tanks. So I'll have more updates on how things are going then. But as always, thanks everyone for watching and take it easy.